Is the microphone okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Javier mentioned, I'm here uh, replacing Vladek for this talk. He was uh, he proposed this talk, and we, we all, me and other people, helped to to provide information about it. Vladek is um, uh, involved in uh, compact modeling for transistors and silicon devices. He works together. He's located in Switzerland. Uh, Daniel is also working in this uh, field. He's located in uh, Poland. I am located in Belgium, actually, and I am a contributor to the Quax project, but I also work with semiconductor and, and micro-mechanical systems. Vadim is from Russia, and he's uh, now in Germany, and he's also in the semiconductor industry. Mike Brinson is a professor in UK, and he's also interested in compact modeling. And Chris is the creator of one of the hardware, hardware boards that we're going to show today. So the talk is about software and hardware tools that could be used for uh, SPICE modeling, mainly uh, parametric, parametric extraction and fitting um, real devices to uh, models, basically. So this is the abstract of the talk. Uh, the main thing is that the bold line is we, we aim to illustrate a complete flow of measurements, uh, characterization in SPICE modeling, SPICE or uh, circuit modeling, um, a bit aimed as uh, semiconductor industry or uh, IC design, but can also be used for um, makers or uh, even uh, education settings. This is the outline. Uh, he starts by bringing the Moore's law into, into play to explain why uh, we have lower barriers to design electronics and to test electronics. And then we go to the example of using this uh, Labrador uh, board, which is an all-in-one uh, electronic test tool for, for yeah, engineers and students. And the nice thing is that it has a, an API that it can be used from Octave to drive and, and read out um, information from this little board. And then we expand on going into the circuit simulator, which also has interfaces to, in this case, Octave and other external tools that could be used for making this uh, combination of the, the raw data, the measurement data, and your conceptual or your, or your model that you have in a, in a schematic capture. And then a brief summary. You might be aware of uh, Moore's Law, which is basically the realization by this uh, guy, which is one of the founders of Intel, that roughly every two years the number of transistors in a chip doubles. And this has been driven, has, has driven the, the industry for quite some decades. But what's really important is that what it delivers to the end users. If you go back in time, uh, one of the first monolithic ICs it had in the 60s by Fairchild, it had basically four or five transistors. It's a, it's a flip-flop. And it's hard to imagine how much cost they, they put into developing this thing. But nowadays, if you go for a, a Raspberry Pi, it's yeah billions or, or so transistors. And you pay for the whole thing, PCBs and everything, about $5. So it's, that makes hardware really accessible for, for all of us. Um, but there is more than more. Uh, what's what's the, the buzzword for that? Uh, can I remove that bar on the top? Okay, whatever. Um, it's not only transistors that nowadays we have on, on, on these chips. So we have also micro-mechanical structures. We have LEDs. We have um, transmission lines. We have optical devices. But the, the flow of the development is, is basically the same. We start from the bottom, from basic research and technology. Then you figure out how you can fabricate these devices. Then you have fabrication facilities and packaging facilities that allow you to, to have uh, a device in the end. In between here, we have uh, people that do design and test of these this, this pieces of uh, circuitry that end up being packaged into ICs or components that are later on assembled into PCBs and, and products that we have in our pockets. And our uh, goal for this talk is to, to, to put some, uh, shine some light on what happens here in between when you have to know how to design, basically, from the fabrication perspective on how to, to, to capture that into a schematic that can be easily simulated and um, you can predict the result of the, of the performance of the circuit beforehand. So here we have then the example based on this uh, Labrador board, which is used for acquiring raw data from measurements. And then we, we hope to interface that with a schematic capture uh, system, uh, which is then going to give you what are the parameters for these discrete components that you have on your circuit. Going a bit on the, the hardware, 
um, <coughs> this was developed by Chris in, in Australia. And it's a tiny little board. It has five main fun functions. So it has a power supply. It has a digital output, has a function generated with two channels, has an oscilloscope or a multimeter, and a logic analyzer. Uh, nice thing is that the software uh, that we're going to see in a minute is uh, GPL. And the hardware is uh, Creative Commons, so you, you, can, you can have a look at the website for the full spec and for the repository of, um, to access this material. For the makers, a bit of background. Why did Chris come up with this board? So we, we figured out that uh, the oscilloscope is one of the main tools for doing anything, really. If you want to look into a circuit, you, you need one of them. But they are typically expensive, right? And uh, they, are, they can be out of reach for many students and, and makers. And this was one of the motivations for him when he had to debug one, of, one analog circuit during his studies, and he didn't have one. So he thought about uh, creating uh, such a board that could be affordable, and in a way you could put a, an oscilloscope in, in the hands of many people. So um, about his development process, so it started as his last year project in university, and it took him 2.5 years, or two and a half years to get everything going. So he, did, uh, he had to learn from scratch uh, like uh, about firmware, about how to do PCBs, uh, how, how, to, how to, to do the circuit design, the logistics about, um, uh, he did a crowd, a crowd uh, fund a project to, to fund this project, how to, to manage that all and was also his first project that he didn't, didn't involve MATLAB. And then he used this tool set to, to, to come up with this uh, interesting little board. So he uses uh, Qt for the UI. He did the, 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 the boards with KiCad, and the API is being done in Octave. And yeah, he mentions here the, um, that yeah, it's intrinsically uh, cross-platform because of the toolkit that he uses. It's uh, free and open source. But that doesn't mean that he gets lots of uh, help from the community. So if you are interested, uh, I, I think you would appreciate. And the Octave API is not uh, completely done. You can control the um, power source, the uh, digital outputs, um, and the, 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 the oscilloscope and uh, multimeter features are not yet fully accessible through the API, but they are available on the, the user interface. And um, what else he mentions? Um, I'm reading a bit his notes because, uh, um, yeah. So he also made a Android app that's also available on the repository that you can take a look, on which you can control the, the outputs and inputs of this um, tiny leaderboard. Going back to the example of merging measurement data and simulation. Here we have a very simple example of a, a, a 407 a CMOS inverter, which is being driven by a three volt square uh, waveform. And it's, uh, yeah, it's inverting the waveform to the five volt rail. And then we conceptually, we could capture the same uh, behavior with a very simple circuit in a circuit simulator. And then we have two data sets, right? We have the raw data for measurement, and we have the simulation data from simulation. But what are the parameters for these transistors? So you can iteratively try to fit the two data together, but you can also use tools to fit that. So that's one of the aims of this talk, to um, outline how you can do such a thing. Uh, in this example, we use uh, QX, which is a schematic capture and simulation software package. It consists of a few tools. We have the schematic capture. We have uh, tools for designing filters, uh, matching networks, transmission lines. Has a reasonably good uh, set of components built in. And there are other command line tools like QX, which is the schematic capture itself. We have a simulator, and we have a converter tool that converts between netlist and, and data formats. But we also interface to external tools like ASCO, which is one optimizer. ADMS, which is used for importing Verilog-A, which is a common language for describing transistors and other semiconductor devices. Uh, we can invoke uh, a Verilog simulation externally, and we can invoke HDL, which we should replace by GHDL soon. And another one for translating PSPICE to SPICE netlist, and we also have some post-processing available in Octave and Python. 
So just to highlight a bit Doctav uh, side of uh, QX, on, on the perspective of uh, doing parameter extraction or uh, fitting uh, raw data to, to measurements, uh, there are a few functions that can be used for that, mainly to do substitutions on, on netlists, uh, either for the Quark simulator or for SPICE. And then you can, you can have full control of the engines from Octave. You can read back the data. And, and you can also have manipulated data into Octave. And you can start from either measurement data or, or parameters that are published by manufacturers. So what the, the, you are going to see in a minute is how to do the fitting between the measurement and the simulations. We have some signatures of functions here that is just basically what I, what I, what I explained about um, producing at least uh, modifying model cards or SPICE model cards and how to read uh, the data back into the environment. This is a very simple example. I'm not sure it's, uh, it's quite readable. We have a very simple schematic in QX and then we move on this schematic into the Octave environment. We load the schematic, we convert to a net list, we replace some parameters, we run the simulation, we do some plotting. Here is the schematic, and here is the, the variables inside of Octave environment. And yeah, you can do the same for, for Spice. In this case, the only difference is that it's creating a Spice net list and it's running Spice on the background. And this is the part of uh, moving data into, into Octave. But then to bring this data back into, the, into parameters or input parameters of your circuit, you, you, we use a fitting tool or an optimization tool. And this is a simple example. We have a bandpass filter where um, the coefficients or the parameters of this passive network, they are, um, they are parameters. And they're going to be defined by an optimization, optimizer, which is trying to optimize some uh, constraints. In this case, we want to minimize the ripple on the passband, maximize the side lobes to have a very nice filter. And by just running uh, an optimization, it, it, it gives you the best uh, parameters in this situation. A more advanced example here, this is in our documentation. It was uh, made by, by Mike. Um, he took an, an actual resistor uh, this, uh, with a little ceramic and two leads, and he measured it on a network analyzer. So this is the, the blue data. And then he made up three equivalent models for that. So he made with capacitors, inductors, to represent the, the, the parameters that could, could affect the behavior of this device. He also wrote it in, form of, in the form of equations, and he also wrote it in, in Verilog A. So these are three compact models for this resistor. But the nice thing that he also, he also did is to use an optimizer to feed the measurement data to one of these uh, compact models to find out what are the parameters of this resistor in reality. So if you, if you are really concerned about, about high frequencies in your components and you have a VNA available, you could measure and you could figure out exactly what's the performance of your device. Which brings us to the full picture, how you integrate everything. This uh, example is better, is better um, you can more easily run it if you run Quax S, which is a friendly fork from, from QX, which is giving more support to SPICE or NGSPICE and ZEISS simulators. But basically, you will start with a, a, a schematic and a set of parameters. Then from the schematic, you move into Octave, and then you produce either a SPICE netlist, which is the purple one, and you run SPICE or you produce a Quax, a QX netlist, you run Quax, QX simulations, and then you bring this data back into Octave, and then you have a choice to feed it to the optimizer, and then the optimizer is going to figure out, well, is my representation, my schematic, um, producing the same output as um, with the, the parameters that I have, or do I have to change the parameters? So it does this loop until you find the parameters that fit uh, the both <laughs> representations. There are other optimizers out there. The first optimizer I mentioned is ASCO, which is really meant for uh, optimizing analog circuits. So if you, have a, if you give a topology for, of an analog circuit, uh, a CAS code, a folded CAS code, it can uh, figure out what are the better parameters given the constraints that you provide. But there are other tools that are more uh, tailored for semiconductor devices. This is one of them. It uh, was developed at uh, TU Delft in Netherlands, and it's Similar approach, you have uh, a control 
file that invokes a simulator, then it tries to fit the data from your measurements, which are the circles, uh, to the simulation, which are the line. So with that, you can potentially figure out what are the parameters of a transistor that you have lying on a piece of silicon in front of you. And it's quite, quite powerful because you can then simulate and be quite sure that the performance that you simulate is close to reality. Then go to the summary. Uh, I will just read a bold letter. So we, it's about open source hardware and software uh, to, to have a schematic and simulation coupled to real circuits doing measurement on which you can compare uh, both results that could potentially lead to an IC design or optimization. So we really think that this is uh, interesting because uh, can can give you access to lower in the pyramid or on, where, on a position where you can design your own chips. In my summary, so it's, we described a workflow for, for electronic design and characterization. We base our example in, in free and open source hardware and software. Of course, there are other types of hardware for more a higher end approach and a lower end approach as we just saw from the uh, Labrador. The barrier, we believe that the barrier is quite low because we have affordable hardware, we have software available, not only on the QC scenario, but in other projects. And there is, uh, it, it, it's quite interesting to bring together measurements from, from real devices and hardware measurement tools and simulation together because this, uh, it facilitates a lot virtual prototyping because you, we are more confident that your end result is going to work, especially in this analog and RF field where you don't often have specs for everything. We think that this is highly relevant for makers, mainly educators, and also for industry. And the, 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 the pitch here is to promote access, perhaps to advanced modeling and in, in the microelectronic domain for design and test. And that's pretty much the, the summary of the talk. And then Vladek also asked me to, to publicize the MOS AK initiative, which uh, is, is an international association which is uh, towards uh, compact model and very low gain standards for semiconductor devices. Uh, they have books, they have conferences, and this new book is coming out in, in March. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, please. Yes. Yes. So the question is, what's the status on finite element or boundary methods for uh, extracting parameters of? Uh, transmission lines or this distributed network, distributed devices. Well, to my knowledge, there are tools available like OpenMS and others that can be readily used for extracting scattering parameters. So you can, you can have a lumped representation of your distributed device, but uh, you have to do the work to, to couple these tools together. So there are tools available, high quality, but somebody has to do the, lift, the heavy lifting. Huh? Uh, here I have a few more specs. It's not it's not very high end, eh? but for many applications it's it's uh, it's more than enough. So for audio applications and for normal things it should be more than enough. So we, we, we don't have that many developers. Also, the question is, what's the status and what's the, the future plan for, for QX? We, very, we have very few developers, eh? very few people that really commit code to it. And we are, we are uh, all volunteers. Me, myself, from last FOSDEM to this one, I, I think I committed a few pull requests, and that's it. I, it was difficult for me. I tried to pull out a release before the end of next year, but we had a bad merge, and then it was, we could not release it. So. It's moving slowly, but we try to make it stable each, each time we release it. And we're still working on cleaning up uh, legacy code, but it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, lengthy, and we don't want to break it. So that's, it's moving. It's not that. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you.